While possessing a lightsaber doesn't automatically make one a Jedi, it plays a pivotal role in a Padawan's progression towards becoming a Jedi Knight and then Master. Throughout the galaxy, various force-wielding groups such as the Jedi, the Sith and others wield lightsabers with a diverse spectrum of colours. But what significance lies behind these colours? And what do they represent? In this video, I'll break down each recognised lightsaber colour in canon and unveil the insights that they provide about their user. So smash that red subscribe button and let's jump into it. The colour of any lightsaber blade stems from the kyber crystal nestled within its hilt, serving as the heart of the weapon. The colour is determined when the user extracts the crystal from its dormant state. Essentially, a lightsaber's colour serves as a revealing element about its wielder and reflects aspects of their personality. So that leads us to number one, blue lightsabers. Blue lightsabers are the most common seen among members of the Jedi Order during the time of the Clone Wars. Blue sabers are used by Jedi Guardians who prefer to focus on lightsaber combat and honing their aggressive negotiation skills. Jedi Guardians are a mirror to Sith warriors from many millennia ago, and they were seen as the Order's representatives to the rest of the galaxy, using combat to protect those in need. Guardians spent most of their time honing their martial arts skills and on peacekeeping missions in violent locations. Some prominent examples of Jedi Guardians are Anakin Skywalker, Count Dooku, when he was still a Jedi, and even ki -Adi Mundi. Number 2. Green Lightsabers Green lightsabers were usually wielded by Jedi Consulars. If a Jedi who was about to harvest his kyber crystal was more in tune with the cosmic force than his fighting ability, he would often have his crystal turn green. Consulars preferred to use non-violent methods of solving problems rather than pulling their lightsaber out on a whim. On top of this, Consular spent most of their time refining their meditation and hoping to get answers to problems through the Force. Now, although Consulars would attempt to avoid conflict for as long as possible, maybe even too long, they were not stupid. They always carried their green blades around just in case they were needed. Finally, Jedi Consulars were some of the best at using Force abilities in combat, making them incredible combatants, despite being so against violence. Some notable examples of Jedi Consulars are Qui-Gon Jinn, Master Yoda, and Kit Fisto. Number 3. Yellow Lightsabers Yellow lightsabers were used by Jedi Sentinels, which are basically a mix of the previous two. Sentinels were some of the most powerful Force users within the Jedi Order, and when Jedi were chosen to become Temple Guards, they would be forced to take on the mindset of a Sentinel, a balance between fighting and calling upon the Force. Now, Sentinels were actually viewed as the most dangerous form of Jedi by Palpatine because they were very active in public life and were commonly seen helping poor and unfortunate citizens of the galaxy. As a result, Palpatine believed that a Jedi from this branch would likely be the one to overthrow him. He was dead wrong. Some big examples of yellow lightsaber users are the Grand Inquisitor before he fell to the dark side, all of the Jedi Temple Guards, Asajj Ventress after she broke off from Dooku, and Rey. Number 4. Purple and Amethyst Lightsabers Purple and Amethyst Lightsabers were exceedingly rare by the time of the Clone Wars because of the very unique personality and force attunement needed to harvest them. Purple kyber crystals could be harvested by those who were firmly in the light side of the force, but were not afraid to use the dark side, if it was ultimately for good. The obvious use case of this was Mace Windu who was definitely a light side force user but developed the lightsaber form known as Vapard, which channeled the dark side. The less obvious example of this is a Jedi Knight named Hugh Lick. Hugh Lick was a Rhodian Jedi Knight who served during the time of the Clone Wars and was one of the rare users of an Amethyst Blade. Just like Mace Windu, Hugh Lick was not afraid to use the dark side of the Force to help others, but he never took it too far. Either way, during Order 66, Hugh Lick was shot down by his clone troopers, but he did manage to get away and set a course for his homeworld of Rhodia. Unfortunately, he didn't survive the journey and his family entombed him at his home along with his Amethyst lightsaber. Many years later, Luke Skywalker discovered the lightsaber and compared it to Mace Windu's, but accidentally destroyed it when trying to deconstruct it. Number 5. Red Lightsabers Red lightsabers stand out as one of the most intriguing hues for a Force user. Unlike other colours that occur naturally in kyber crystals during harvesting, the red hue is achieved through a distinctly unnatural process. To attain this colour, the user must compel the kyber crystal to bleed through the Force, channeling intense rage and anger until it transforms into a deep red shade. This practice was commonly employed by Sith, including the iconic Darth Vader. All colours of kyber crystal can be turned to red through this dark side induced bleeding. Prominent wielders of red lightsabers include Palpatine, Vader and notably Taran Malakos, who bled his crystal after the events of Order 66. Malakos however utilised Night Sister Magics, a variant of the dark side, to achieve this transformation, seamlessly leading us to the exploration of the next significant lightsaber colour, number 6, White Lightsabers. White lightsabers are just as interesting as red ones. In fact, the two are connected. To turn a kyber crystal white, a force user must purify it via the light side of the force to stop it from bleeding. We know for sure that a force user can purify a red kyber crystal to white, but we're not totally sure yet in canon if the other colours can be purified also. The obvious notable user of this colour is Ahsoka Tano, who obtained her white lightsabers after killing the Inquisitor known as the Sixth Brother with her bare hands. She did this on the streets of Rada, a small farming moon, after the Sixth Brother discovered that she was plotting a rebellion after Order 66. Regardless, she exploded his own lightsabers on him, 
leaving only the bleeding red crystals remaining. She then purified these two crystals, turning them white, and used spare parts to construct her two sabers. Number 7, Black. The most obvious and only current Black Saber that we've seen is the ancient Mandalorian Dark Saber. The Dark Saber was created by the first ever Mandalorian to become a Jedi, Tar Vizsla and after his death it was stored in the Jedi Temple Vault for safekeeping. Unfortunately for the Jedi, the Mandalorian soon stole the Darksaber back, considering it a Mandalorian relic. At this point it became a symbol of power and leadership, and the Mandalorian who held it was considered the leader of the Mandalorian people. Known holders of this weapon are Tar Vizsla, the creator, Pre Vizsla, his distant descendant, Maul after he took control of Mandalore, Sabine Wren, Bo-Katan Kryze, Moff Gideon, and now Din Djarin. Although now it's gone back to Bo-Katan and was subsequently destroyed by Moff Gideon, but anyway, I wish they didn't do that, but that's for another video. Now there is a question over whether the Darksaber is a lightsaber or if it is a completely separate class of weapon being a white Darksaber. Based on some of the artwork for the High Republic, it does appear that the Darksaber is not a lightsaber but a white Darksaber and that there could be blue, red or even green Darksabers if a Mandalorian chooses to make them, but right now that is unclear in canon. Finally, there are actual lightsabers that emit black blades used by the mysterious Sith Wraiths. These appeared in the Shadow of the Sith book and we don't really know that much about them, but as far as we know they are black lightsabers. So take that for what you will. After that is number 8, cloudy blue or sky blue lightsabers. Surprisingly, this variation is actually different to the regular blue lightsabers. A cloudy blue lightsaber was seen in the form of a saber cane used by the Jedi Elder Terra Sunube. The cloudy blue colour was only possible if the user harvested his crystal with a completely clear mind and remained focused on the living force entirely. This matches up very well with Master Terra Sunube who was wise beyond most. Number 9, Yellow Green. Yellow Green is an extremely rare lightsaber colour that was used by Padawan Ahsoka Tano during the Clone Wars. When Ahsoka harvested the kyber crystal for her Shoto Saber, the smaller one, she was shocked to find out that it was not a pure green crystal like her first. It instead was yellow green, a mixture of both, which told her that she was moving closer to a balance between being a guardian and a consular. Since her original was green, this means she was moving away from the cosmic force and closer to the living force and lightsaber combat. This is probably because her master was Anakin Skywalker of all people. Very understandable. Number 10, Orange. The orange lightsaber is a bit of a mysterious one. In canon, only a few people have ever wielded it. Cal Kestis has access to an orange lightsaber, but we're not canonically sure if he's actually used it, and in Jedi Survivor we meet Dryer Thorn, one of the Bedlam Raiders, and she has an orange lightsaber that she got by killing an unknown Jedi Master. Due to the rarity of this color, as well as the fact that we don't know anything about it, it may be something restricted to a certain level of Force user. Number 11, Orange Red. These are brand new to the Star Wars canon having only been seen in the Ahsoka show which aired recently. They're wielded by Balin Skull and Shin Hati, two mercenaries who were once part of the Jedi Order but no longer associate with it. Very little is known about them but seeing as they fight the Jedi protagonists of the show and have these red tinted orange sabers, it can be assumed that some kind of dark side ritual plays a part here in their blades being the colour that they are. Maybe it was an attempt for them to purify a red lightsaber but a failure. Who knows, let me know what you think in the comments down below. After that is number 12, Indigo. Indigo is another of the lightsaber colour choices from the Jedi Fallen Order series but it's not Cal Kestis's canonical colour. In canon there are no currently known wielders of an indigo blade. Number 13, Magenta. Just like Indigo, this one is from Fallen Order and there are no currently known users of this colour in canon but it certainly does exist within the canon universe. Number 14, Cyan. Again, Cyan is another lightsaber colour from Fallen Order and it's pretty close to blue, but not quite. There are no known wielders of this color in canon and nothing more is known about it. So that is all of the currently known lightsaber colors in Star Wars canon. Really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that subscribe button, join the Discord, which is in the description, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you made it this far, drop a thank Mr. Calcestis in the comments down below.